In this video, I'm going to talk about feminine insecurity. I've mentioned before in the context of feminine nature, but just in case some of you did not quite understand why feminine insecurity is a good thing, I'm making this video in which I explain why feminine insecurity is a good thing. First things first, if you haven't watched the series called Feminine Power, please watch it before continuing watching this video. Thank you. Now, the female, as mentioned before, is a transmitter of energy. She also emits as a spirit being, but she's primarily a transmitter, while the male is an emitter. When it comes to the female energy field, take the size of her head and put it above her head and do the same below her uh, her feet. And then imagine an oval shaped uh, um, field around her. That's the female energy field. It's a small one. With a male, a male needs to stretch out his arms, one here, one there, and then from the edge of the fingers, you draw a circle because the male energy field is a ball. It's a sphere. That's what the male energy field is, a sphere. And the female energy field is an oval, like a grape. Okay, that's why I compared females to grapes. And males are compared to apples. Now, feminine insecurity is part of the softness of a female. As a transmitter, she brings balance in the energetic emissions of the human population. Therefore, she is soft and she has this insecurity. This insecurity is what pushes her to rely on Christ and those that reflect Christ because Christ is the creator and the male is the reflection of Christ. So, feminine insecurity aims to push women to rely on Christ with the men and this, pre this makes them I won't say prepared, but this enables them to relate well to the reflections of Christ, who are human males. I hope this is clear. So, feminine insecurity is part of our spiritual strength. It's not a defect. In the world, you're told, as a female, that your feminine insecurity is a defect that you need to compensate for. And how do you compensate for this? so-called defect by envying men, by wanting to become like men, or by controlling a man. And sometimes women even want to become the man directly, either by becoming an FVM transgender or by acting as a man by turning into a sodomite. So, feminine homosexuality Often, not always, but often it's also a result of them rejecting their feminine insecurity. Often it's a form of compensation for them not accepting who and what they are. Now, I'm going to give some scenarios in which feminine insecurity is powerful. Let's say now, okay, I'm, I need to have a name. Fumiko, I'm going to use a Japanese name now. Fumiko is in town. She's at the grocery store. At the grocery store, she encounters this small kid. And the kid is laden with stress. Now, she approaches the kid and she talks to the kid. But because she is so soft-spoken and because she is so quote-unquote, insecure, the child now feels safe with her. And now, the toxic waste was waiting on the kid. It now goes towards her, and she dissolves it. As transmitter, she dissolved the negative tension that was on the child. The child didn't bring it on himself nor herself. The child's just a child. So, in this case, her feminine insecurity was what enabled the child to feel safe with her. 
So in this scenario, her feminine insecurity functioned as a strength. Okay, let's say now there is a situation somewhere and you have this guy who, I don't know what his mental issue is, but he lost it and he has heavy muscles and he's about to throw with chairs and all of it. And then you have this female that works there, maybe as a bartender, I don't know, and she is totally into her femininity. Her insecurity will backfire on the man who lost his mind. And it will trigger memories of his own mother. And because he, as a child, he had this urge to be with his mom, her insecurity now provokes this longing back to his mother. And because this man is not in his right mind, because he has attachment issues, this reminder of his mother and the uh, and the longing to be in a safe relationship, uh, in a safe setting with his mother now calms him down. He can't make, he can't do it to lash out in the presence of this feminine woman because psychologically he can't handle it. So the guy who just lost it runs away. Her feminine insecurity was a strength and her feminine insecurity hindered homicide from taking place. Let's say now you had the same guy over there and he lost it and you had those security guards that came to him with their fierce maleness. This fierce maleness would have made him feel more threatened, he would have escalated. In this case, a good dose of feminine vibes was needed. Now look, does this mean that women should be sent into war zones to cool off predators? I don't recommend that. That's not what I was aiming to, okay? Nevertheless, in the world, it happens that they use females as psychic shields. Okay, let me explain that. I'm not in agreement with this, but the world is doing this. And probably the world is doing it to you, lady that's listening to this. It goes like this. Feminine energy has a healing effect. It doesn't bring healing by itself, but it has a healing effect. So what does the world do? The world conditions women to dress in a desirable fashion when they want to work somewhere and they send those women that will dress a bit provokingly into the field. They're the ones that have to deal with the customers. Why is that? It is because many customers have frustrations that they don't want to face. Many customers have issues. But you still need those customers or else you can't run your business. So what do you do? You send females out there with their feminine vibes, with their softness. They dress a bit provokingly. And this calms down the people that are heavenly laden. It doesn't take away what they're laden with. It doesn't heal them nor cure them. But it calms them down. That's why... In Japan, it's not only in Japan, you have this uh, concept of the maid cafe. I know that maid cafes are used often for other purposes, but a maid, in a maid cafe, you have those women who are dressed like house cleaners, sometimes in a bit sexual provoking manner. Why is that? So that when Japanese men are tired from work, they may be upset with the boss and they just want to relax, they go to a maid cafe. And you have all these women with their strong feminine vibes over there. It's like fresh air to him. He's away from the toxic male environment. And it works. And this concept of using feminine energy as a psychic shield is practiced by many professions. In the flight industry, they use flight attendants in a similar fashion, even though flight attendants are not allowed to dress that provokingly because it may upset some people. It, but even there, they use feminine energy as a psychic shield. Don't get me wrong. There are times on flights, things get out of hand. La last time I read an article in a newspaper about a flight 
from the UK towards Spain, where half of the people on board began to fight one another. And guess what? They were mill. They were mills that could not deal with frustration. In this case, there were way too many of them and very few female flight attendants. So the healing effect didn't work well. But overall, the healing effect of females is used by corporations worldwide to appease and relax customers. That's why for many jobs, if you are a man, they will not take you. Because they know you, you don't have this special quality to calm people down with your insecurity. Males can be insecure, but when males are insecure, it often doesn't work well in their favor. When females operate in their natural insecurity, I'm not talking about females being insecure just like that. I'm talking about their natural insecurity. When they operate in it, they are powerful. And here's another thing. Witches know this. Witches know that their feminine insecurity can be used as a tool. But here's the trap. Because they are witches and they not, do not relate well to their natural insecurity, they end up endangering themselves. But they still have a short-term effect in what they want. Don't you know that many of those women who sleep around with men to get a higher position at, at the job, or they just sleep around just to um, get ahead in life, that they are using their feminine insecurity to trap the men? They're abusing and misusing their na the natural insecurity, but they know they have it and they use it. That's why they get ahead. That's why they're able to get things from a lot of men, especially worldly men. And those men later ask themselves, why did they do it? You have a lot of female scammers that are misusing their feminine insecurity to scam folks. And they manage to get tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars, I, I'm using euros now, from other people. And because of their softness, people wouldn't think that they are the scammers, while well, they are. Yes, it happens. Female predators tend to use their feminine insecurity in the wrong way. But when you misuse your feminine insecurity, it will backfire on you. That's why female scammers seldom stay in one place for a long period of time. That's why they don't stay long in relationships. Because sooner or later, it will backfire on them. Now, righteous women should embrace their feminine insecurity because that is where their strength is. Not only calming people down, but also in motivating people. Some would say, oh, shit, that's manipulation. That's wrong. No, no, no. Blackmail is wrong. Manipulation for the right reasons is acceptable. If you have a teacher and a teacher um, gives you homework, he's giving you homework to prepare you for the test and he doesn't give you the answers to the test because if he gave you the answers before the test, it wouldn't serve its purpose in training you to, to remember um, the lectures. You have to remember the lectures to be disciplined in a certain way. If he told you the test results, none of the results, if he told you the answer to the test, why would you even take the test? Why would you even take the exam? In this case, the teacher manipulates you to develop your skills. Blackmail is when someone wants something that he can't account for and he wants it at your expense and they trap you into agreeing with them against your own well-being. That's blackmail. When women use their natural insecurity, or you can call it feminine insecurity, they are powerful in steering circumstances. Females need this strength, or else they would only be a parasite onto the men and other women around them. Unfortunately, there are many women who don't know how to relate to their feminine insecurity. That's why they end up being emotional, and sometimes psychic parasites. And the world excuses this because, they, well, that's just how females are. No, that's how the fact females operate. That's not how Christ intended it. And here's another thing. 
I need to add here. I had women on this YouTube channel telling me that when they were younger, they tried to be masculine just to scare off predators. Because they were afraid if they were feminine and soft, they would be uh, trampled upon. I need to correct that view. Predators don't want a feminine woman. A woman should be feminine because that's what she is. She's a female, so she ought to be feminine. But predators don't want a feminine woman. Let me repeat that. Predators do not want a feminine woman. A feminine woman is the last thing they want. Predators want defect females. Because defect females you can drain. Defect females you can scapegoat. Defect females you can trample upon them easily. That's what predators want. Defect females. They don't want feminine females. As Christ intended it. They especially want righteous females. Who are not just feminine but also walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't want that. That lost one. Righteous women. That's the nightmare of every predator. So feminine insecurity is an asset for God's glory. It's also an asset to the community. Nevertheless, feminine insecurity needs to be supervised. That's why you ought to have female role models who are a bit older that are instructing younger women. And overall, above that, you have male supervision. Preferably of males that follow Christ. Unbelieving males can also supervise, but they are trapped. So demons can use them. So feminine insecurity serves to reflect God's glory. And between human beings, it serves to transmit and amplify male energy. It goes like this, when a young girl is born, she's born as a baby, very cute and all, she's cries, because all babies cry. When she's a young girl, two, three, four years old, there needs to be a stable male around. That not only provides attention to her, but also puts up with her crying, with her, well, you know how little kids can be. Why is that? She needs to have a positive male imprint on her soul and on her brain. The brain builds neural pathways based on what she goes through and in her soul. It's not the physical body, but in her soul, this is, this is recorded as an imprint. She needs to have the imprint of a stable male early on in her existence. Because this will show her that God himself can be trusted. The male is a reflection of God himself. When you read in Revelations, the first two chapters, the Apostle John, in his, late, in his old age, had Christ visiting him. Now, he walked with Christ when Christ was in his physical body on the earth. Christ was crucified, Christ rose from the dead, and Christ ascended in that human body into the heavens. When John was of old age, he was the last of the apostles, was still alive. Christ appeared to him, and is not, I won't say in his raw ex, um, form, but Christ appeared to him in a glorified state. So when the apostle John turned around and saw Christ, he described him as a very intense being that emits a lot of light and he has eyes as a flame. Flaming eyes. That, that means an intense look, an intense expression from the eyes. That's what males have. Now why am I mentioning this? It is because this fierce, intense look that many of those supermodels have it's not feminine. Females have a soft expression that comes from their eyes. Males have a very intense, harsh, intimidating expression. 
Why? Because this fierce expression is what God has. And males are created in the image of God. They are God's reflection, so they have this intensity also. Females receive whatever intensity they have from the males around them. Okay, now go back to the story of that little girl. She grows up realizing that this intense being around, this physically strong and energetically intense creature, which is the male, is her daddy, is her father. He has the ability to harm her, but he won't. He is using his strength on her behalf. This is the imprint every woman should have from their fathers early on. When this imprint does not happen, she is likely to develop all types of mental issues, emotional issues, and she will be a defect female for the rest of her life unless she is delivered. If she didn't get this positive imprint of her father early on, then at least if there are other males around that are healthy, that will work out well for her. This will enable her to embrace her feminine insecurity and to operate in the power of that feminine insecurity. So for feminine insecurity to remain healthy and effective and prosperous for the community, there needs to be healthy male emissions. And the females must learn to trust healthy male emissions. Now, if a woman got a positive imprint from her father early on, then she knows how to recognize healthy masculine energy. As a spirit being, because she's a spirit being, she will be able to discern it early on. If a female did not receive a proper male imprint in her early years, and there was and there were no other males around that at least could have picked up on her. If that didn't happen, she will have no clue whatsoever what healthy masculine energy is. She will not be able to function well in her femininity. And this is what makes her an easy target to predators. Whether it's a male predator or whether it's a female sodomite predator. Because you have a lot of those also. So, now that you know that feminine insecurity is an asset to the community, now you know why it's important for fathers to be around in the household. Especially for women, this is important. Now you understand why females are not recommended to function without male supervision. Now you understand this deep urge that females have to connect with other men and to have one man, one human male particularly, to be close to her. Females crave relationships, not just with men, but they crave male intensity. Not, I'm not just talking about the sexual part here, okay? Because females naturally are a bit reserved when it comes to receiving sexual energy. And that's a good thing. They shouldn't receive sexual energy from just every man that comes around. That's quite dangerous. However, if you have a female, that's the fact in her mind that doesn't want to embrace her net, uh, feminine insecurity, then she will compensate this by draining men of their sexual energy. She'll end up sleeping around here and there, becoming sex addict, and in, worst, in a worst case scenario, she will um, turn into a sodomite herself, draining other women also. The, those things happen as a result of a woman not being able to relate to her own natural insecurity. And I'm going to repeat something I said before in this video, because so this is something very important. Predators do not want feminine women. They don't. They just wants a prey and a woman that operates in her femininity is everything but a prey you come too close to her 
in the wrong way, you are in trouble. You don't have to be in trouble physically, but you'll be in trouble spiritually. When a woman operates in her femininity, you are in trouble if you don't relate to her in a proper manner. So she won't need self-defense courses. She won't need any witchcraft as conversation. She won't need to carry weapons, all of that. If she's just functioning as a natural female should and should relate well to it, you're in trouble because remember, she's a transmitter and she amplifies stuff. So if you send filthy energy towards her, that filthy energy will backfire on you because it will, because as a transmitter, she's, she's a transmitter by nature, she will transmit whether she's aware of it or not, it will come back. And when it comes back, it will attract other um, attention to you. Also, negative tension from males. So, a woman operating in femininity is an empowered and strong female. She does not need a hate group of women, the fact women on the loose, to empower her. Or what we call feminism. She doesn't need that. Look, if a female has trust issues, mainly because there was no positive male imprint when she grew up, then the best thing for her to do is to, and then I, I'm not telling her to isolate herself, but to take time for herself, spend time in the Word, learn to trust God first, and from there, the Holy Spirit will bring men ar uh, into her life with positive male emissions, which will um, heal her from the negative imprint she had from her either absent or abusive father figure. So healing is possible. Females can survive, thrive, overcome and overrule. That's what I want to see. Okay? Well, that's it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ, the man, and be at peace.